Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law and my co-host and my friend, oh my God. Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here to talk Sister Wives, Season 19, Episode 6. Uh-huh. There's a lot we're going to have to bandy about. Yep. But before we get into it, we do have to issue you a disclaimer, please. Hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. Mm -hmm. We have legitimately stupid opinions. For sure. And we're not going to apologize about no. it. So if you're sensitive. Get out of here. You might want to find yourself another dumpster. Bye. But if you're down to party and talk about some curly cues on a bald head, <laughs> welcome to this dumpster and if you are down to party with us be sure to follow us on instagram at reality tv cringe and join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv cringe that's where the real party's at okay and if you are watching on youtube i think we may i think we hit we four. are finally at 4k <laughs> oh, oh my gosh I'm, I'm very happy me too let's take a moment to just appreciate so that great. we made our goal and additionally to that this is our 200th episode on Two. our actual audio podcast. Now, some of you haven't been here very long. Some of you might have been here for the whole year we've been on YouTube. Yeah. But we've been doing our actual audio pod uh, for like two for, years I now. Think two years. My so God. 200 episodes wow. of me and you just yapping just about blabbing. sister wives and reality TV. I can't believe it's turned into this. I know. We were just, <laughs> her first episode was on her couch out there. <laughs> just screaming. Just mad. All drunk and mad at Cody <laughs> yeah. Brown. It was fantastic. It was great. Um, but like, so congratulations to all of us yeah. for being in the dumpster that long. And if you are watching on YouTube, first of all, thank you. Thank you. Please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe, subscribe because please. truly that's how we continue to grow. And that's all we want to do. We want to get yeah. fatter and fatter and fatter until we blow this popsicle stand. Until we have to go visit doctor now. <laughs> yeah. We have to get a bigger McMansion. We really do. Yes. A huge one. That's what we want. So yeah. thank you in advance. Thank you. Now, before we get into the episode, we do have some dumpster service, which means we've got yeah. people writing in. Yeah. We've got people calling in. Oh. And so there are some things to address. Let's talk. Let's start first with the people who have called in. Called in. Okay. Yes. We got two speak pipes. So by the way, if you want to call us, we would love to hear from you. All yes. you have to do is go to speakpipe.com slash reality tv cringe you can leave us up to 90 second message yeah it's absolutely free, free. go crazy we love it we love it so, so we have much. a couple of messages we do let's get into it the first one is from Luis. hi Luis. in houston texas a fellow texan okay yeah hey girls this is Luis. i'm calling from houston texas um what the fuck was up with Tony being so fucking cringe asking Christine like, oh, he reminds me of Cody. Like, shut the hell up and go eat your fucking tacos. He is just so weird. And McKelty is fucking weird, too. Like, they're just fucking meant for each other. I just, ugh, they both just disgust me. <laughs> That's so good. Ah, that's really fucking funny. I 100% agree, Louise. Me too. Me too. Um, what did you think about that this week? I mean, literally, like, why do we have to have them on our TV? We say it every fucking week. They're so annoying. McKelty is all about me, 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 me. She's got her dad in her a little bit. She's got to be and in the Christine spotlight. and Christine for sure. And Tony, I'm like, shut up, dude. Nobody needs your opinion. No, just not sit at all. there. That's it. And it's like every single moment that they can, they're like trying to get the attention and yeah. say something funny or say something clever. I'm like, oh my God, shut up. Please. Nobody cares what your opinion is. No, no one at all. He doesn't make any sense. No, he doesn't. He's I an embarrassment. <laughs> they're both embarrassing. <laughs> he is. And I thought his Cody comment was just trying like a bad attempt at a joke. But I'm like, it's stupid. Oh, when he said that 
David reminded him of yeah, Cody. because like, he's not. And also, that's a pretty hurtful thing to say to someone who has most likely legitimate trauma from uh-huh. this, I dare say, abusive person. Mm-hmm. And that's Cody Brown. And Christine's the one with the trauma. And you're just trotting out a joke like that. Well, at this time, because it's 2022, Tony and McKelty are still oh. like kind of okay with Cody and Robin. So, of course, he's going to make like a dumb joke like that but it's like fuck cody fuck you tony yeah fuck you tony fuck you mckelty <laughs> fuck y'all i think they want like their own spin-off show or something oh, please nobody so wants that every single week we have this dumb duo auditioning for our attention and i'm sick of it no one wants it i'm also sick of david oh my god and i'm sick of christine oh my god girl me too biting her lower lip please. and quirking that sexy eyebrow make it stop i can't take it mm, i cannot mm. take it i I want her to be happy and so I'm being very long suffering about it I'm like okay I'm happy for you to have found somebody but if I just see you bite your lip one more time I'm gonna lose my shit seriously I'm gonna commit bad things yeah <laughs> like I can't do it all right we have another speak pipe okay from Brittany Dennis and I think this is about um last week's episode okay hi guys Brittany here love you guys love your podcast you keep me laughing constantly um, just listen to the newest Sister Wives episode, and I also agree that Robin was sitting in her bathroom floor high as a kite. My theory is she took a little too much Ambien on Christmas night, trying to get some sleep, probably doesn't even remember making the video. Anyways, keep me laughing, guys. Thanks. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Oh, I could totally see Ambien. Yeah, maybe For Ambien sure. does make sense. Oh, yeah, because people talk crazy shit mm-hmm. and do crazy shit on Ambien. I right. see patients at work on Ambien all the time, and they don't make no sense. Yeah. So I could see that. Well, I met my now husband when I was on Lunesta. Oh, my God. I was sending him messages on the Facebook, and Stop. I was telling him he had such arresting eyes. Oh, my God. Like Christine with David? <laughs> yes. I loved his eyes, but I, like I didn't really know him from Adam. Yeah. And then I would wake up in the morning and I would see that I had messaged him. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm fucking messaging this man in the middle of the night. But you know, he fell in love anyway. Of course he He did. fell in love anyway. But that was all Lunesta. Stop it. No, it's true. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so Robin was doing the Ambien. Do we think it's Ambien? Do we think it's a, a, a Benzo? I could see Ambien more than a Benzo. Okay. Personally. Well, she's got to cope. She's trying to figure out a way through because she's so sad. I'm about not having her Christmas. She doesn't have her family. Oh, I don't care. Cry me a river. <laughs> For real. All right. So there were also a couple of comments that you wanted to highlight and go over. Yeah, they were on our Patreon. Okay. So there are patron comments. I thought they were just really good. So our first one was from Lisa and she had a really good comment that mm-hmm. I was blown away by so she was talking about how she she loves that we watch red lipstick reality tv oh yes she totally agrees with her and you talking about janelle and her apathy Mm. she says i don't think cody was ever a great dad janelle according to the book the sister wives book did not have a dad who was present in any way in her life therefore she probably thought it was wonderful that cody spent any time with her kids at all Also, there is a gal on YouTube, and I guess TikTok, which I don't watch as I only use YouTube, who is the daughter of the current prophet of the AUB. He gave Mary the release. Well, he told his daughter that Cody didn't say a word about the release from Mary during the phone call, but switched right away to Christine. So when the AUB guy called him, Mm -hmm. he started talking about Christine. Evidently, Cody said something like, you better not give Christine a release as I've done nothing to her. The prophet told his daughter that he would for certain give any of and any and all of those women a release if they would approach. So there is a bit of info. The name of the channel is Notes to Self 444. The woman who has this channel is no longer speaking with her dad. Okay. But it's, I guess she was talking about that with the AUB prophet, which I thought was very interesting. That is so unhinged Mm -hmm. that they would be calling him to discuss his termination or his release with Mary, and he would immediately just switch up and start ranting about Christine. I mean, can't you see him saying some shit like that, though? Uh, I don't know. That seems really berserk and nuts to me. It's Cody Brown. Okay, but like Christine by this point has been gone for like over a year, right? Yeah, but I mean, Mary was the one that sought out the release. 
They already granted it to her, so he can't fight it. So now he's like, yeah, okay, well, you better not give Christine or Janelle releases. I can I just don't understand him. In fact, this entire episode, I was just watching his mannerisms mm-hmm. and I was thinking to myself, self, do we need to get this guy some brain imaging? Because like, does he have a tumor? <laughs> like, does he have some early onset or something? Like something's very wrong with him. He's a tumor. I mean, we know that he's in the manosphere. Uh-huh. We know that he's got some toxic masculinity, some red pills and mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. But like, I think he's going legitimately crazy. Oh, yeah. That conversation with Mary made no sense. Yeah. First and foremost, production was chopping up that scene left, right, up and down and sideways, honey. Yeah. So that it didn't make a lot of sense. But you could also tell by Mary, just like the way she was looking at him, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, are you okay? No. I don't think he's okay. No, he's not. He's literally going insane. He's fucking delusional. And that's what he gets. I mean, honestly, like, what the fuck is wrong with him? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know what we're watching, actually. It's very, very confounding to me. Yeah. He is the tumor, though. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to Lisa's point, though, about Janelle not really having a reference point for what a good father would be mm-hmm. and having, like, not had that demonstrated to her by a good man in her life is actually something to think about. Oh, yeah. Because maybe she just has no idea like what a good father is supposed to be. I mean, we can all come up with our ideas, but Mm -hmm. if it hasn't been demonstrated and modeled to us, then we are likely to be attracted to a dude who's bad for us or problematic, which Janelle was. Exactly. I think I could totally see that. But it's also like, okay, I mean, you can see how he's being shitty though, right? Like he's not going over your house. Like, But maybe because she's been stuck in polygamy... She's just kind of been accustomed to that. Like, well, yeah, it's like totally normal to see your dad like once every two weeks. Like, it's totally fine because plug me. Uh. Maybe, but like she was a monogamous first. She was married True. to Mary's brother. Yeah. Although they didn't have children, obviously. But mm-hmm. I mean, it's just very strange to me because Janelle continues to strike me as the most intelligent one. For sure. But like that doesn't mean emotionally intelligent. Mm-hmm. I don't actually think she's all that emotionally intelligent. I agree. Mm-hmm. I don't think a lot of them are, honestly. Yeah. Good comment, Lisa. Yeah. And then we have another comment from Patreon from Anna. And she says, I'm thinking that Mary sought out a release from church leaders, not because of her faith, but because she knew the leaders would place blame on Cody, that the word abandonment would be used against him, and that Cody would bristle at that. She's a sniper from the side kind of shady bitch using faith, Cody's faith, as a shield. Huh. Which I thought was kind of interesting. Do you think so? I mean, I could see Mary being a little petty like that. And I mean, I would totally do that. Be like, (laughs) oh, yeah. I'd be like, okay, we're going to get a release from the church and they're going to blame it on you, bitch ass. Yeah, but Mary also invited him like he was well within his rights to attend. Who knows if she thought maybe he would show up to, Mm -hmm. to speak with them as well. It sounds also like the term abandonment was a designation that was given to her by the leader i don't necessarily get the vibe that she went in asking for a release based on abandonment like because she knew it was going to bother cody i think she just went in and she told them what was going on and she also said we have film and footage to verify and you've probably been watching all of these years anyway and you've seen how he's been treating me and it was the leader who then said yeah you've been abandoned yeah I mean, I could see a world where she went there knowing that they were going to grant it to her, no mu- no problem, and that they were going to call him up and be like, yeah, you abandoned your wives and you're a shit-ass husband. Like, I could see a world where she knew that that was going to happen as somebody who's, like, been in this faith slash cult But that cult not as her, time. like, total motive, though. No, I mean, I'm like, sure she did it on purpose for the faith. Yeah, and, like, I think yeah. she's loyal to her faith. I think sure. she's an a believer in mm-hmm. her religion and i think she was trying to do the right thing for her soul yeah I guess. but like she probably had an idea that they were going to have to notify him that yes the release went through and these are the grounds upon which they went through but mm-hmm. i don't know very interesting idea though yeah i kind of <laughs> liked it so yeah i mean if mary did do that i would love that for i her. love it very yeah. much so very great well great comments thank you guys thank so you. much and again we love it when you call us and you leave us a speak pipe all you have to do is go to speakpipe.com slash reality tv cringe we love to hear from you and thank you guys for calling in thank you all right let's get into the most recent episode of sister wives which again is season 19 episode 6 entitled deliver me from all my fears Okay. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means either. I don't know what that's in reference to. But we start off with a conversation about 
Christmas because it's Christmas time uh, circa 2022, uh, two years ago, and everybody's talking about how different Christmas is now because they don't have the big happy family. They don't have the chaos. We start with Robin and Cody like so happy about their Christmas together because that's what they truly wanted. And mm-hmm. they're talking about wrapping gifts and Cody's smiling and laughing like it's so great. Yeah, because he, he doesn't no have to pay attention to any other women or any of his other kids. And he doesn't have to buy them any presents that he doesn't wrap. So he's living large. He's happy. He is very happy. And then we have Mary having Christmas with her friends, Amber and Lisa. And I'm just wondering, why not with Leon? Me as well. Like, what the heck? I don't know. Maybe Leon was there. Maybe we just have a situation where Leon and Audrey don't want to be filmed for the show. Okay. And maybe don't even want to be mentioned. And so if they were there, Mary just didn't show it. I don't know. I feel bad. Where do they live? I was trying to remember. Colorado. Colorado. So not in Utah. Yeah. I thought for some reason they were going back to Utah. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. They're, as far as I know, they're still in Colorado. Right. But I'm just like, why? Well, maybe they've got some issues from before. I mean... I certainly would if I were Leon. I would have long-standing issues if I had to be on a show with these crazy people. So yeah. maybe Leon's just taking their distance. Who knows? I was just happy that Mary was not alone. Oh, yeah. Me too. At least she had friends to hang out with. I know Robin was kind of mentioning, like, it's me for his Christmas without Mary. I hope she's okay. I miss her. I'm like, no, you fucking don't. Yep. You don't give a crap. Lies. Ugh. And then Janelle's with, I think, Maddie and the kids mm-hmm. out in North Carolina. And then Christine is having kind of a quiet family Christmas. And Christmases are just different and smaller, which is sad to me. Yeah. Everything changes. Yeah. When the kids are little, it's so magical. And the chaos of having your family around you. Can you even imagine if it was like 18 children oh and five adults? Insane. And just the energy mm-hmm. every holiday. I'm sure they were used to that. And so things are getting quieter and life does go on. Yeah. But I is. love how Janelle is just like, yeah, but that's just what happens, you know, and it's going to be all right. And Mary's like, people evolve and yeah. things change. And so they don't seem to be mourning the loss of their family, unlike Robin, right. who was having a really hard time, allegedly, 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 <laughs> yeah. with the loss of her family. One thing I loved, and I do have to say, mm. is that that was the only time we saw Robin. I know. So good. the very beginning. And then there was no peep from her for the rest of the show. I love that. I love it as well. Let's keep doing that. Please. More Mary, less Robin. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And then we open a conversation about dating because Christine's a single woman in this filming, even mm-hmm. though we saw her wedding last year. <laughs> and she's talking about dating. She's got a matchmaker. She wants a bald guy with tattoos who rides a motorcycle which i just want to say i have been predicting (laughs) for mary though for mary (laughs) yeah not for christine but like you did manifest it into the franchise i did but then Mm -hmm. she goes with david (laughs) right well done well yeah well bald yeah works but anyway she's talking about dating mary's like i don't even know where to start i'm fucking 52 and i don't what i don't want to deal with this Mm -hmm. and janelle's not interested no at all She's so jaded, honey. She's like, I don't want to even look at a dating app. If I'm going to be with anybody, it's going to be completely organic. It's going to be natural. I'm not out here like Christine employing a matchmaker and on 17 apps and going on all these fucking dates. I don't have time for that. I want to start a flower farm. I want to move. I want to settle. I want to put down roots. Yeah. (laughs) So, but that's not Christine. Christine wants her magical romance. And you know what? Christine deserves it. Yes. She does deserve to be happy. Yes. And I want to make it clear before we get to this next section. I am happy for her that she's found her me. I'm glad for that. But when we get to the section where Christine's talking about David with her kids, I was annoyed with her. Why? I was mad. Mad? Because Yeah, I was so mad. Like, uh, irrationally mad. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because she's saying shit like, yeah, it's important for me to know how my kids feel about David, but, like, regardless of how they feel, I'm not going to stop dating him. And I don't care if they're uncomfortable with the PDA, and I don't care if they don't like my relationship with him, because I'm going to be with him no matter what. Mm. And I hated that. Okay, so why? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Because it's selfish, I think. Mm-hmm. And it, like as a parent, I feel like you should 
your kids' opinions should have a little bit of weight. It shouldn't. They, they should come first. I mean, hello. They should come first. And like, it'd be one thing if all of her kids were adults and out of the house, but she's still got little Truly there. Yes. Who's totally dangected in the middle of that room, reading a book, not giving a fuck. She's like only there because her mom told her to be. Right. She doesn't want to be there. No. And Christine's saying all this shit in front of Truly. I'm like, Truly's like 14. 12 or something like that yeah, very like, young come on you're saying you don't give a shit so if she does say she's uncomfortable it doesn't matter because you're still gonna be making out with david in front of her Ooh, that made me mad yes and so from the perspective of a parent like that is something that first of all you shouldn't say if you uh -huh. think that you should keep that into your indoor voice yep. like we don't have to say that with our words but secondarily like you shouldn't actually feel that way mm -hmm. you should put your child first however to play devil's advocate, you're talking about a woman who has been with Cody Brown for almost 30 years, a yeah. man who was never attracted to her, mm -hmm. caused her deep wounds of a feminine nature. Like, yeah. she's not lovable. She's not beautiful. She's not worth his time. I mean, all of these things she's been living with for so long. And now she's free. And she's being super proactive, again, getting a matchmaker, getting on the app so she can find somebody to connect with. And nobody is going to stop her from her realizing her dream. Like, I definitely have sympathy and compassion for how she could kind of let that get away from herself. Like, she could she could really, really, really deeply want that and yeah. fuck everybody else. Well, and that's, like, totally fair and valid. Like, of course, she was married to Cody Brown. So, like, she deserves to have all the mint and date and do whatever the fuck you want just don't say that kind of shit don't say that shit in front of your kids or on tv where they're gonna see that where they're like oh okay fuck my opinion then because well but they, she's been doing that for years with her kids and so have so has mary and so have janelle and honestly so has robin like yeah. they've been allowing cody brown to walk all over them for years to neglect them and to be abusive and they didn't stop him then so for sure why does she give a shit now yeah no, totally. Yeah. And I was talking to Ethel about it and she was saying that like, you know, because Christine grew up in this like super restrictive religion and cult and everything, she didn't get a chance to like be young and be free mm -hmm. and like be an immature like 20 something, you know, just like dating around and being selfish and doing whatever. And so now that she's finally out of this long abusive marriage, she's kind of reverted back mm -hmm. to that point of her life. And I'm like, yeah, but that doesn't make it right. <laughs> Correct. Like it's annoying. Yeah, like you could handle it differently. Yeah. I think there was a, a point where Peyton was saying something like, we're just saying it's fast. We're not saying it's wrong or that you need to stop. And Christine says something like, okay, great, because I wouldn't have. Yeah, I hate like, that. You didn't need to say that. Like he Ooh. was trying to be charitable. He was trying to be supportive in the moment. And you mm -hmm. could have just, oh, I really appreciate that you, that you said that. Thank you so much for supporting me. Like there's just a different way to handle it. But Christine has been historically in the canon, honey, mm -hmm. very immature. Yep. She's an immature person. She pops off at the mouth. She doesn't think about what she says ahead of time. She's driven by her emotionality. Mm -hmm. And she's not afraid to be this person in front of her kids. And honestly, I think Truly's checked out. Oh, yeah. I mean, can you imagine being Truly kind of a little bit of a stoic child mm -hmm. who's got her interests, having to live with Christine, who's probably nonstop talking oh, the entire annoying. time, can never let a silent moment go by, mm -hmm. is always full of energy. So she's just probably disassociated. She's in an astral plane. <laughs> She wants to be anywhere else than in that room with her mom. For Listening sure. to her talk about PDA and kissing and saying I love you to this man. After a week. After a week. After a week, they say I love you to each other. Yeah. It's like, it's so crazy to me. And I mean, full disclosure. We'll yeah. We'll go uncensored for it a little bit. Okay. Back from uncensored. Though. Okay. <laughs> um, your kids want you to be happy. And they're kind of put in this position of like, cool, so I can't really express that I'm uncomfortable about this. but Or I, a little nervous for you. Yeah, that I'm a little nervous. It's moving too fast or whatever. But I want you to be happy, so I'm going to pretend like it's fine and pretend like I'm not uncomfortable with it. And that, in my case, just leads to estrangement, just leads to kind of like a weird relationship with your parents going forward. And mm -hmm. I hope that that doesn't happen for Christine's kids. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, David's great, but like, is this going to last? Do you think so? Well, I'm not sure. Um, 
speaking of estrangement from her kids, like I do kind of sniff a little bit some disconnect with her and Gwen for Mm -hmm. sure. Some disconnect maybe even between her and Isabel. Isabel seems really uncomfortable in this scene to just be in the room talking about this on camera, but also with her mom. And you can tell that Christine is manufacturing. She's producing this scene. She's inviting all of the kids over because the pretense was I've got something to tell you before Truly comes home, but then Truly comes home and they're talking about it anyway. Mm -hmm. So like she's manufacturing this moment. Isabel doesn't seem really um, happy with that. And also Aspen doesn't seem really comfortable Mm-mm. with Christine. I think a lot of these kids are actually tired of her shenanigans, uh-huh. but also understand that their mom has been through a lot and they want to be there to support her. Now, just from my perspective, yeah. I have to say, like, with my husband, who I was DMing on Lunesta, <laughs> bitch, talking mad shit that I did not even remember in the morning. Like, I think we talked via Facebook for a month and a half mm-hmm. without meeting. Mm-hmm. And then it escalated and like we started texting or whatever. Within a week of us texting, we decided to go out on a date. He asked me out on a date and we met on a Sunday night at a dive bar, the Lakewood Grill in Denver. And it was like such a sweet date. I'm not going to go crazy and tell you all about it. But it was such, oh my God, I walked in. (laughs) Oh my God, I walked in and here's this 6'3 guy. Like he's showing up for a job interview he's got like Stop. these slacks on and these polished shoes and like this <laughs> to know it so cute. it is so cute and he has like this button down long sleeve shirt and he's got his hair all combed knowing him now just That's he, really knowing how cute. he actually dresses and what he looks like it was so cute and he was walking across the bar with these two little cosmopolitans because i had told him that was my favorite drink and he'd never had it so he's walking this huge lumberjack of a man who's like tiptoeing across this dive bar in his in his resume outfit. Stop it. Um, I fell in love with him immediately. Yeah. Like I was already falling in love with him before I even sat down for that date because we were talking. And I want to say, oh my God, I'm just like chagrined this is even me. But I think I introduced him to my daughter within three days. Well, and I think your daughter and him were talking on Facebook yeah. about video games like before you guys even That's were together. That's how I noticed yes. him. I noticed him because he was talking to my daughter yeah. who was like 13 or 14 at the time and they had a video game in common and I'm like, oh my God, he's so good with her. Yeah. And that's what got the ball rolling. So I also fell in love very quickly. I also introduced him to my daughter in person mm-hmm. very quickly. I believe it can happen. Obviously, we've been together now 13 years. has been a long time. Duh, yeah. He's the love of my life. He's my burrito. <laughs> But like as a rule, it's probably ill-advised to introduce your new paramour to your children in a week or even a month or even six months, maybe even a year. Well, and your daughter has told me because I've asked her before, like my experience with my whole different thing, right? Mm -hmm. My your wife has told me your wife, my daughter, my daughter, your wife, my wife, (laughs) your yeah, Jesus, um, has told me. Yeah, my mom always made sure that I was comfortable, mm-hmm. like with any of them. And like, if anything, oh, any of them, uh, well, well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she said she was kind mm-hmm. of like a stamp of approval type of a thing. Like, yes. You were always caring about her feelings, mm-hmm. making sure she was OK mm-hmm. when you were dating around all those men. Oh, my God. I, I, I couldn't yeah, help it. I, mean, I couldn't help it. They were attracted <laughs> to me like bees to honey. So, yeah. But I, I probably... I probably did some things wrong, and I'm going to acknowledge that. And so yeah. I see myself in Christine yeah. as well. And I can see how she can get carried away and be like so in love with David that she's making some wrong moves as a parent right now. Of course. Look, I know that my Aries moon needs to just chill the fuck out. Just a little bit. Simmer down a little bit. I get it. Pipe I'm down. happy she's happy. Mm-hmm. I'm happy she's getting her first orgasms. That's Yes. Oh, great. my God. Can you imagine? Oh, my God. I hope she's getting all of that and more. I'm sure. It's just like, it's a little much. <laughs> well, you asked me whether I thought David and Christine would stay together. Mm-hmm. And I actually think that they have a very good chance because they both come up through LDS. I think Mm -hmm. this type of courtship is very typical in Mormonism. It's very quick. Mm -hmm. And I think that they are older too. So they probably know what they want. And so I think they have a good chance personally. I think so too. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to cringe at it though. Yeah. (laughs) I don't need to see it. I don't want to see it. I'm sick of that. I'm so tired of it. But that's my thought. Yeah. Me too. 
And then we have like a little brief scene with Janelle, Caleb, and Maddie out in North Carolina. Which we have to talk about, we do though, have to talk because about. it's a very important scene because it does skirt around the issue of coins. Uh-huh. Because they're talking about land and like what they want to do. They really like the property out in Montana. They don't know if they're going to go with it. They're trying to find the perfect property where they can eventually build on, blah, blah, blah. And then Janelle brings up the fact that she's still trying to get Cody to buy her out of Coyote Pass. But apparently... Apparently, Cody's broke. Yes. He ain't got the money for that. He keeps putting her off mm. and not answering her questions. So she is going to have to consult with an attorney. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the reason nothing has happened is because Cody is claiming that he does not have the money to pay off her land with him and potentially any of the other plots as well. Mm. Janelle tells us that she's got the money. She's ready to go. We know that Mary probably has the money and is ready to go because she probably has more money than everybody. Yep. But it's Cody and Robin who don't have the money. Ooh. I mean, I can totally see them being broke, but mm -hmm. I also think that this is like a power play on Cody's part. Maybe. I think he wants to control it a bit. Yeah, but I think bit. he also probably doesn't have any money. Yeah, for sure. And I think this is around the time they're going to take out one of those HELOC loans in order to give Janelle some money. I love it. But at the same time, we know that Janelle's name is still on her plot of land, and so is mm -hmm. Mary's name. So they are still owners. So he didn't buy them out yeah. as of right now, unless we just don't know about it. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I would think that the records would be updated with that, but... I don't know. As of it, as of right now, their mm -hmm. names are still on it. So that's really weird to me. Right. But yeah, that was it. That was just a very brief blip. Mm -hmm. And then we have Cody coming over to Mary's house to have a conversation with her about Why? the release. What is happening? He comes in hot. Uh -huh. He's like, she tells me one thing and then it's a totally different vibe. I'm feeling something totally different. I'm like, well, then why are... Why are we coming over? Like, you've had a release. The marriage has been terminated. Why are you stomping? you opening the door. Uh-huh. You're letting opening himself in. the door, letting yourself into her house. Like, she's going to open the door, and he lets himself in, and she's like, oh, okay, well, come on in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jesus. He only did this, in my opinion, to hurt her more, to say more mean shit, and to also try and get her to admit on camera mm -hmm. that it wasn't all him, that he is somewhat blameless mm -hmm. for their release, their divorce. Like, it was all just for him and his stupid fucking ego. He had no other purpose. He fucking hates her. He doesn't want to be around her. He doesn't want to talk to her. I don't know. Based on what he says, he's starting to like her after six years. Such and I'm bullshit. trying to go back in my mind six years ago. Was that around the time of the catfish? I don't, I think the catfish was longer, right? Was it? I'm not sure when the catfish happened. It kind of sounds like, I mean, if this is 2022, and so that puts us at like oh, 2016, yeah. right? Right, we're in the back time. I think that might be around the time of the catfish, oh. which is when he's claiming in his timeline, he lost feelings for Mary. Mary does correct him in the conversation and say, well, I think it was before that, if you are going to be honest about it. Well, yeah, because in the freaking talking heads, he's saying that he should have ended the marriage 25 years ago. So yeah more than six years he can't keep his shit straight no and that's why i'm like why are we even indulging this crazy person i don't know he's like the crazy person in the street who's just screaming <laughs> at people as they walk by and none of it makes sense yeah no for real why are we even listening to this person why aren't we institutionalizing this person this person needs psychiatric help yeah but you can't help this you can't fix this you can medicate this i mean <laughs> you can lobotomize this <laughs> We could do something because this is crazy. And oh. again, you see Mary mm -hmm. sitting across from him. Clearly, she's been told they're going to film a scene. Mm -hmm. It's going to probably be the goodbye scene. And we're just going to wrap things up with a nice, beautiful bow. And so he comes in hot and he starts arguing. And she's just like, Ooh, what the fuck is happening? And he starts talking in these non sequiturs. At least that's how it appears to me. Yeah. Bringing up a variety of things. At one point, he even says, I never said I wasn't willing to work on it. I know. Like, what the fuck was that? And I then mean, he says, well, I was what? willing to fake it for you. Like, as if that's better. And then he says again, but I mean, I would have worked on it with you. <laughs> I'm like, what are... What are we, why isn't a producer, like, why aren't we breaking the fourth wall in that moment and having a producer step into the middle of the room and say, actually, we just filmed that whole thing out on Coyote Pass at yeah. the picnic bench when you told her that it was never, ever, ever, ever going to happen again. Ever. Do you not remember that? And like, are you having a psychotic break? I mean. My guy? 
I fucking wonder because even in his talking head too, he's talking about like, I would never want to stay married with her. I would never want to be married to her ever again. Like she's terrible. I married the wrong person. All of this shit. So I'm like, why are you saying all of but this? But then in the same talking head, he's like, I don't know why. There's just a part of me that <laughs> wants to continue to try. I continue to believe that this is fixable. Uh, uh, Huh? I, I I don't honestly I'm like production do your fucking job dude do your fucking job because what you're serving us is just this hodgepodge mishmash of all these storylines that doesn't make any sense to somebody who's just trying to follow along I know and I'm like when was these when were these talking heads filmed too mm -hmm. when he's saying all this shit in reaction to this chat with mary it's like it doesn't make any sense because obviously this chat was like two years ago and then we have mary and her talking head uh -huh, from like three reacting. months ago or it's whatever like i can't keep track of anything in this and show. i can tell that on the couch in these interviews they are responding to things that we're not even watching right like you can tell like they're not even talking about the the scene we're actually looking at yeah that's how bad the production of this that's how bad the editing is of this right and I'm like, if you have this much old footage, like, why are we so far behind in the show? Like, if you have all of this B-roll, like, mm -hmm. that you're just showing us and clipping and putting together, like, why can't we just catch up to current times? I think we're going to try and catch up. Um, and I know, I know that we complain about that all the time. And I hate to continue to do that because well, everybody but... feels the same way. This scene, though, felt particularly insane for me. It's yeah. like they... they had a scene that they needed to film. Mary had an idea what it was going to be. And right before that, Cody got a phone call from the leaders of his church. Mm -hmm. And that triggered him. And now he wants to change kind of the context of the conversation. And so he wants to call her out and make sure that the cameras pick up Mary admitting that it wasn't just his fault. Because if it's her fault too, then it couldn't be abandonment. Exactly. So he wants to have a conversation where she lets him off the hook. Yeah, well, he's also calling her a gaslighter in the talking heads. Well, I'm, I don't want to accuse her of gaslighting, but she's been feeding me bullshit for 32 right. years. It's like, oh my God. The master like, gaslighter. Seriously, it's so crazy. Like, and everybody's calling him a narcissist and stuff because he straight up yeah. is. I mean, histrionic to the core. Like, you're sitting here rewriting everything to make yourself look better in your own dumb mind or is there a different motive because at some point in this conversation or maybe it was when he was on the couch he talks about how in his church if he is in mm -hmm. polygamist marriages and he is known to discard his wives and he can't marry again in the church right he said you can't have additional wives if you're known to discard them okay so what does that mean like, are you going to have more wives? Is that why you're concerned about how this looks and about abandoning or discarding Mary? Like, you don't want it to look like that? So what? You can potentially... Are they leaving their options open, in other words, in 2022 to maybe bring on additional wives to see how they can save this show? That would be insane. But I'm like, why are you saying that when just last week you were saying that you've lost your faith and you don't want to acknowledge any of the BS of the church and you don't care about any of it, and you don't care if Mary gets a release because you just don't think it's legitimate anymore. Mm -hmm. so, so then why are you upset? Why are you upset? Because they left. Because mm -hmm. he's being blamed for it. Because everybody fucking hates him in the world. And he doesn't think he's done anything wrong at all. The only thing I did wrong was marrying the wrong person. The only thing I did wrong was not loving them. But you know what? Not loving them is their fault. I know. Blame yourself if I don't love you, okay? I couldn't take it. I can't, I, dude. I literally, I just, I can't even watch the television when it's, I have to look away. Yeah. Dude, I have to shake my head. It's Because so it's crazy. just so preposterous. Like that he would even have the audacity, the codiosity to sit on the couch and to say that with a straight face like he really believes it, which is why I am legitimately questioning this man's sanity. Oh, he does believe it. Like that's his logic that he has concocted, that it's everybody's fault if they if he loves them or if he doesn't love them because you have to be lovable mm -hmm. in order for me to love you but then he says i married a woman i didn't love so much that i chose to serve her anyway uh-huh and i was in such a and in such a bad marriage that i didn't realize it because i had good marriages or better marriages with christine and janelle i'm like what? I can, I can't believe you even said that. <laughs> i couldn't believe 
me sad that. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. But the way he knew that his relationship with Mary was rocky is that his relationship with Janelle was so much better and that his relationship with Christine was so much better. Huh? After telling us that you never loved these women and that you virtually hate Christine. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. Crazy talk. Insanity. I don't understand it at all. And then he said something else. Well, I, one thing he did say was like, I can't believe you did it so quickly. Well, like the moment that we had the conversation out on Coyote Pass, you decided, okay, well, this man don't want me. So let me petition the church and ask for a release. And apparently she did it in short order and was given the release as we know. And he's just like shocked and stunned and shook that it happened. And she's like, well, but why? And what do you mean? Quickly. <laughs> it's been like 10 years. You haven't fucked me. I mean, it has been a long ass time I mean, that I have been unhappy. And this is hello. where he's like, well, we've got different timestamps <laughs> as to when, you know, we fell out of love with each other. He doesn't even say fell out of love. He's like, when we just stopped liking each other, when we stopped being happy. And him, it's from the very beginning, apparently, because it was so terrible. And then he goes into that weird rant about effing and effing. Right. Fighting and fucking, I guess. Right, which the only benefit of that is orgasms. And it's like, ew, shut up. For Nobody you. wants to think. Yeah, I'm sure you weren't giving anybody orgasms, Cody. No, not even Robin. Honey. I mean, as selfish as you are in these relationships, I have no doubt that you were a selfish person in bed. 1, Poor Christine. No wonder she's a freak right now. No I, wonder she's losing her literal shit because David is giving her the O face. Honestly. <laughs> He's got that flavor <laughs> saver, honey. Yeah. He's downtown working it out with no, Christine. God bless. She's a woman liberated. Oh, my God. We and know Cody wasn't eating the kitty cat, please. Girl, please. He was lost in five whole minutes in there. Mm -mm. I mean, seriously. Mm -hmm. But, you know, with him and Robin, they have this deep emotional I, when intimacy. He did this, when he did this, I was like, stop doing that right now. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? What is that? Deep. Versus this. Oh, my God. Just <laughs> shut up. Shut up. And Stop talking. It's so fucking vulgar, too. Like, he just has to it say is. the most terrible, heinous things about these women. And then he wonders why everybody fucking hates him in the entire world and why these women are just on here like, yeah, like, I don't know what's wrong with Cody. I don't know. It's and Mary not... even says, like, he's been saying some really mean things. Yeah. It's obvious there's something internally going on with Cody Brown because, mm -hmm. like, well, who is this person? And Janelle even says, I don't know who this person is. This is not the same person that I was married to for so many years. This is a different guy. I Again, mean... let's get him into Dr. Amen and get his brain image. <laughs> for real. And lobotomized. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> or something. Like... Just shut him up. <laughs> please shut him make up. him go nonverbal. bind and gag him <laughs> just ball fucking gag him man keep him on the couch just fucking zip tied <laughs> and a ball gag shut the fuck he up he probably would like i've that. had enough of you and all of your bloviating you piece of shit it's wild triggered to me. it's uh, a reality tv show but i'm in a dumpster i should calm down he's just so fucking terrible and this whole conversation with mary was just to hurt her and punish her even more and we don't get anywhere Beatrice. no we don't we don't get anywhere with this show because no. again they don't advance the timeline mm -hmm. which we scream about but like we're not resolving anything we're not like seeing cody like on this beautiful consciousness um transit where he's becoming self-aware oh my god i'm a piece of shit and i've alienated my entire family let me go to therapy let me make amends let me do something like it's just year after yep. year after year of this absolute piece of shit pile of shit human being yeah screaming on the internet or screaming on our television and contributing to the demons on this planet for real the powers and the principalities honey we're not wrestling against flesh and blood no we're wrestling against the demon that is cody brown yep i do not prefer him i do not prefer him either and the other thing that was interesting out of this conversation was when he said Robin wants Mary to still come over and hang out at their houses for holidays. And Mary's like, um, we're exes. I'm not going to ever hang out with you guys ever again. Fuck you, basically. And Cody's like, well, Robin really, really wants you to be there. And um, he's like, normally I don't listen to Robin. <laughs> and Mary's like, are you stupid? Yeah. Uh, of course you do. And he's like, you really don't know me at all if you don't think I'm a man of my own mind. <laughs> God. And like, first of all, you're talking about the woman who's known you the longest. Right. Out of everybody. She's grown up with you. She's been with you for 32 years in your life, unfortunately, for 32 years. And you're going to say she doesn't know you. Mm -hmm. She knows you the best. Yes. And that's why you're pissed. That's why you're coming over here to try and, 
I don't know, absolve yourself of some kind of responsibility because you don't want to be the one to be blamed. And or to keep her on the hook because why in the world would you say that I was willing to work on things? Crazy. I mean, he's he's watching the money walk out Mm -hmm. of the door and walk out of his experience. And Janelle's gone, Christine's gone, and he knows once... Once Mary's gone, it is really just him and his wife who does not work. Yep. Have fun. Mm -hmm. Your greatest fear is poverty and you're approaching it. Yep. And what are you going to do with these uh, pieces of property on Coyote Pass? Mm. And what are you going to do with your mortgage? And what are you going to do with all these loans that you've taken out against your McMansion? And you don't have a job and you can't sell guns anymore because you violated the law or something. And Mm -hmm. Robin doesn't know how to work and she can't do anything but break dance. (laughs) For real. So you're what panicking. You and so now you're back at Mary's house trying yeah. to make her feel guilty mm-hmm. and make her want to stay. And she's like, no, bitch, I'm going to Parowan. Bye. I'm going to my haunted b and I'm going to live my best life. I'm going yep. to Disneyland, bitch. <laughs> just about to say. I am not hanging out with you. Ever again. Oh, God. I guess this whole... is Bon Voyage then. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, I guess this is fuck you <laughs> then. <laughs> Sit and spin then. I guess that's what this is. Oh, my God. And then imbecile. At the end of it, he has the gall to say, I'm embarrassed that my other relationships and marriages have ended in such contempt. Yeah. And so this is kind of giving validity, I think he thinks, to the fact that he's there. Like, he doesn't want it to end on a bad note, even though he came in crazy. But, like, he really wants to preserve stuff with Mary, like, maybe in the future, she can like call him up, let him know something's going on in his her life and they can stay in touch, unlike the other two relationships which have turned into contemptuous relationships. I don't think he actually wants that. Me neither. I mean, last episode he's talking about how boring and fucking dull Mary is. So he's like, oh yeah, I hope she can call me when she has something fun to say. Yeah. <laughs> Not even curious about her. She's (laughs) not fun. Like, you literally don't care if she's dead or alive. No. No. At all. You have it for the last decades. Didn't he, like, say something like that last year? Like, I don't care if she lives or dies. I don't know what. (laughs) That's how terrible and dastardly he is. He's so awful. Mm -hmm. And then we end the episode with Christine going on a date. Okay. With David. (laughs) So he comes to the door. And she opens up that door in her leather skirt, looking like a dime piece. Looking like a hey, snack. Me, me, looking um. like a Mormon snack. Hey, me, me, um. hey, me, me, uh. <laughs> hey, me, me. And he's can't. like so excited. They go to their date and we can see the connection. I can feel the chemistry. Can't you? Uh, sure. There's yeah. some love in I the can. air tonight. Yeah, because Christine's like forcing it down our throats. Like, just uh, <laughs> well, we do learn how aggressive she is. Yeah. In terms of dating, like he didn't kiss her until the third date. Wow. She had to I ask mean, him, like, "Are you even attracted to me again?" That is a question born of her trauma, of and he's course, like, "I'm yeah. very attracted to you." And so then she immediately started making out with him. Uh huh. I'm sure he's just like, "Damn." He's like, "Okay, you're aggressive." Well, and he even says on camera, like, "You were really desperate for affection." She's like, well, yeah, from you. Only you. I mean, that's sad. No, it is totally sad. It totally is. And I mean, I'm sure he was saying that in jest because he knows that she's been touch starved for a long time. Like, I totally get it. It's sad for Christine. I'm glad she found her man. Yeah. I just really can't take the lip biting (laughs) dude i can't take the lip biting anymore if i have to see that one more fucking time it's the eyebrow quirk for me and like the way she holds her head down and looks up at him with her sexy eyes i'm like listen she's a 50 year old woman who's who is experiencing sexual liberation i hope and And so i'm just i'm gonna be so supportive i'm supportive of christine and you're a monster (laughs) beatrice for judging her in any way look i can't be the only one that feels this way it's so cringy to watch it. I'm sorry. It's just like, look, when my mom left my dad, she uh-huh. had her little sexy mom face. Yeah. I was totally fine, but she was not biting her lip every five seconds. Yeah. She was not doing this. Okay. I'm just saying. Let Christine live. Look. Okay. <laughs> Didn't somebody say that last year yes, when we were going did. crazy during the wedding special? Oh, my look. God. Let Christine live. No. We will not. <laughs> we will not. <laughs> Nobody can live in this dumpster unless we allow it. Oh, God. Yeah. And then they talk about their love story, their magical date when she like had her hand on his chest and she felt his heart fluttering and then their hearts and their souls synced up. Literally, she told sink. that story in front of her kids at I the know. top of the episode and she started crying and I'm like, stop. And then she did it Stop again. it right now. Oh, but yeah, they, she tells the story and I don't care. <laughs> and I want to fast forward through it all. I know. I like literally just zone out because I'm like. Well, and we 
actually heard this entire thing in season 18. Yeah. So I don't feel like we need to revisit the fact that you found your burrito. We, You found your soulmate. And they used the same footage that they used last year in which she's talking about Cody and Robin being soulmates. Mm-hmm. And now she totally gets it. And how she wouldn't want to be away from her soulmate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I don't care. And I'm snoring i know and then we have the preview Mm -hmm. and we're gonna watch them again biting their lips at the fucking wedding venue picking it out and i'm like they're literally only together like a month i know and they're going to look at wedding venues i guess like they're envisioning it they're putting it on their vision board honey they're manifesting they're visualizing it i mean they get married that year i think yeah so oh, I yeah. mean, they are moving very fast and again like you had said like when you're you know a little older and stuff like you just know what you want totally fair and valid but it it's a little it's a little much it's well yeah they're fast. hauling all the kids with them to I check out these venues they must think you're insane well and poor isabel and truly both look away as christine and david are making out at this altar that they're going to get married at and they're both like so fucking uncomfortable and christine doesn't give a shit <laughs> just making out with her bald prince charming well Live your best life, Christine. I guess. But don't make your kids uncomfortable. Oh, my God. Ugh. And then um, Janelle and Robin talk about their weddings because, you know, Christine's about to get married. Janelle's like, my wedding wasn't even a big deal. I didn't even have a dress. Robin says some bullshit like, my wedding wasn't even about me. Sure. Neither was your honeymoon for 11 days, right? Like, what are we fucking talking yeah. about? And then we have Mary leaving Flagstaff officially. And that's it. Yep. So I look forward to it. Do you? Yeah, except for Christine. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of boring. Yeah. Like, we could be doing so much more. We could yeah. be so much more advanced in the timeline. For we could sure. be having different types of discussions, but we have the same thing every week. Yep. It's a lot. It is a lot. I really hope we start fast forwarding to the current day or yep. more current time. But yes. we'll, we probably will. Hopefully, we'll get there. Yeah. Hopefully, we will. Let us know how you guys feel in the comments. Yeah. And also, don't forget, you can call us and let it pop off. Let us know what you guys are thinking about this Please. season. Are you enjoying it? What do you think about the production? What do you think about Cody Brown? Do we need to get him an MRI? <laughs> do we need to have a wellness check? <laughs> Maybe. Out at the McMansion after yeah. they had to take that home off the MLS, honey? Is he okay? Is he seeing the Grim Reaper? No, probably. Oh, I don't care. Hate to hear it. <laughs> um, okay, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get up on out of here, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leaving us a glowing five-star review. Five. It really helps us grow the pod so we can get fatter. We really appreciate it. Thank you. We will be back later this week to conclude The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Oh We're going to be covering two episodes. Mm-hmm. Make sure to come back for that. Until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>